Hey guys, Josh here with How to Roll Dice. Uh, I had a little bit of an idea and maybe I'm just out of my mind, but daily content, is that a thing that you guys might be interested in? I was thinking I spend a lot of time apologizing for not getting my larger projects out, the things like the 30 or 40 minute game reviews, the in-depth walkthroughs, the larger projects, like, you know, doing an entire mini documentary on the weekend at a convention. And those things are, you know, I love making those and I think you guys really enjoy those and I'm never gonna stop making those. But I feel like rather than popping on here every couple of days to explain why I don't have the next one out yet when it's relatively obvious, I think. It's because I try to put a lot of uh, quality into making those, and so they take longer. I try to get various shots and angles and slow-mo and do really nice audio and backing music and stuff like that, um, that those take more time to produce, which is why you guys seem to like them so much, I would think. Uh, maybe a little bit to me, but uh, most of it is probably that I do a good job of explaining the game and I make it look nice. Um, and so I'm gonna continue to do that, but rather than popping on here every few days and apologizing for not having done the next one yet, I figure I can just put out a quick little video, maybe three to five minutes long, talking about something gaming related to give you guys a little something to look at, you know, between the big ones. Um, and so today I was tossing around a few ideas, more stuff about the Iron Kingdom's Rec Room books. Uh, found out that there was a completely secondary Kickstarter that released three more core level books having to do with all the Horde stuff that almost no one knew about. It got half the backers that the first one did. I searched their social media, I could barely find anything. I think I found one Instagram announcement. It got one comment, which means for a company the size of Privateer Press, they didn't do a very good job advertising it. Um, and that just bummed me out even more because now not only do the books that I do have have problems, but I essentially own half of a game and the backer uh, backing options are closed and there's a good chance that no retail stores around me or many at all picked up the, uh, the expansion books, which means that uh, I basically can't purchase the second half of the game. So even if I wanted to play it, it's kind of going to be a dulled down version, which is a bummer. Um, there's also the fact that uh, I really want to jump back into the Alien RPG. Um, I was thinking about how sort of befuddled I am with the 5th uh, edition option of uh, Iron Kingdoms now, and I was even debating taking all of the lore and classes and sort of all of the, the updated stuff from the new books and using the D6 system from the older, uh, more unique, in my opinion, Iron Kingdoms uh, rule set. But I feel like that's going to get really messy and fall apart pretty quickly. And the last RPG that I picked up that was actually really, really enjoyable and really got me in the mood to want to play was the Alien role-playing game. And it's by Free League Press. It is great. The book is very well made. Um, <laughs> a little jab there. Um, and uh, I absolutely love the content and the gameplay mechanics are so unique to anything else that I've ever tried to pick up and learn. Uh, it actually had me like rereading the entire four or five hundred page book two or three times to make sure that I understood even the basics of getting started. But that made me really want to play even more. Um, we did do one quick little like trial game. It only lasted about an hour and a half and it was rough, but it was mostly because I was trying to carry things and I was just getting the players to try to, you know, walk through various steps so that I could see how they worked from the player perspective. Um, but I really want to give that a shot too. Um, but what I actually wanted to talk about today is um, a website that I mention all the time that I just assume that you guys know about or have checked out in your own time, but maybe you haven't, and that's BoardGameGeek.com. If you're into board games or you want to get into board games or you have somebody that you care a lot about who is into board games and you want to try to understand them more on their behalf, so that you can hold a conversation about it, BoardGameGeek.com is a spectacular resource. It's sort of somewhere between a forum and a review and a news site, talking about everything gaming related, but particularly focused on board games, tabletop games. There are some RPG reviews on there, there are some trading card game reviews on there, there are some tabletop miniatures games uh, that are reviewed and discussed on there, but it is, I would say, 90 to 95% board games. And when I say board games, I don't just mean the latest and greatest, I mean sort of every game that's ever been released across all time. Um, there are some really easy to use features that are highly beneficial. For example, whenever I'm going out to peruse a local game store or maybe going to a convention, seeing things I've never seen before, games that look interesting but cost a lot of money so I don't just want to jump right in. Uh, or if I'm at a store that might have some games that I just haven't come across before because they're designed for a different audience, more of a mainstream audience, like if I go to a Barnes & Nobles or a Target, those stores are really starting to expand their gaming section quite considerably. It's pretty impressive and enjoyable. Um, 
but uh, a lot of times they'll have games that you won't necessarily recognize because they're geared for this weird sort of like not an extreme gamer but not like your typical uh, to use the term soccer mom probably outdated but um, you know it's it's for this weird like middle ground of gamer where like maybe you've played a few maybe you're getting past Monopoly Risk Stratego but you're not quite on your way to a Feast for Odin um, you're somewhere in this gray zone and so there's this weird patch of games that those types of stores have say you wanted to pick one of those up or you were intrigued by one of them but you don't just want to throw down 50 60 bucks on a whim you can go to boardgamegeek.com and pull up the board game list select the all function and what it's going to do by default is take every board game that has ever been reviewed which is quite a few and it's going to rank them and it's not just user reviews it's like a weighted user review where they also mix in some professional and sort of approved reviews to give you a more balanced review um, and if you look at say the top 100 games you can all but guarantee that those games are going to be spectacular and that's sort of what i use as a shopping list just by default if there's not a game that i've come across that i've looked at that i really want to pick up based off of what i've seen about the game reviews that i've read personally i can just go to that top 100 list which is basically the first page of the you know all board games ranked and if it's on that list, I trust that it's pretty good. And I've very rarely, if ever, been let down by that list. I would say most recently, the only one that stands out in my mind, as I mentioned in a previous video, is Great Western Trail 2nd Edition, which is not that different from Great Western Trail 1st Edition, which is a very highly ranked game. I want to say it's, it's top 10, maybe top 15. Um, so very, very highly ranked, and I just didn't care much for the game, but my friends absolutely love it. So that's probably me in, sp you know, in particular, uh, and not the game itself. I'll otherwise, why would it be rated so high? Um, and there are games on there that are rated very highly or that hit even one game of the year. That's another nice feature that the site does. They give out a game of the year every year for the best game released that year based on reviews and opinions. Um, and there have been a few of those that I disagree with. For example, Root. Uh, Root is great for a lot of reasons, but in my opinion, the gameplay is flawed for a few more than it is great for. Um, and so for me, that game is like a six or a seven. I think I might have given it a six. And I think that won Game of the Year 2019 or 2018. But on the other hand, Wingspan also won Game of the Year right around that time. And I absolutely love Wingspan. Um, so most of the time I do agree with the reviews and you can definitely use it as a guide to go out there and see what's worth picking up and to sort of dabble into different game styles without worrying that you're going to go off a cliff and just waste 70 bucks on a game that's no good. If it's in the top 100 or even I would say the top 500, it's probably a very good game. Now, on the other hand, if you're looking to pick up a game and you go and look at the website, and it's got terrible reviews. It's somewhere in the, you know, you know five to ten thousand range. Um, maybe you read a little bit about it. Maybe it's got some gameplay mechanics you weren't expecting. Maybe it's got some major flaws. Maybe there's no product support and maybe there are some some screw ups in the rule book and nobody has really done a good job of answering to those from the manufacturer side. Maybe you avoid dropping money on that game and you save yourself some hassle. Um, now that's not to say that you shouldn't pick up a game if you think it looks cool just because it's got some bad reviews online. Obviously you don't just want to be guided entirely by other people's opinions. But when you're looking at such a large collaboration of people who are into different styles of games for different reasons, and across that entire spectrum, a game is either very highly or very lowly rated, that's something worth taking into consideration before you spend a decent amount of money on a game. Now, if you're talking about a $20 or $30 box for most people, that's not that big of a deal if you're into this kind of hobby relative to the sort of the average cost of games, not that bad. But if you're looking at spending, you know, 70, 80, 100, $120 on a game as some of the better ones can sort of get up there in scale and oftentimes reasonably, uh, you know, for a reasonable, um, purpose, you're getting more pieces, you're getting more components, you're getting a grander game, it plays more people, it's in a nicer box, etc. Um, a lot of times if you're getting into that range, you want to be a little more cautious before you throw your money down. And so using a site like Board Game Geek uh, really helps you out there. Uh, if you're looking to buy games for somebody else and you're not into games and you have no idea what to get them, look at what the highest reviewed game of this year was. Buy them the game of the year. Buy them the game of the year from last year. Maybe it's a little bit cheaper. Maybe it'll be easier to find a copy because it's not the hot item right now. Maybe you're interested in checking out what's new on Kickstarter. What's sort of really getting the people's attention and why. You can have their, you know, Kickstarter section pop up right on the main page. Scroll down to that and you can see what percentage these various Kickstarters are backed at. Sometimes you'll see Kickstarter games that are backed at like two or three thousand percent over the ask. And I mean, that really has to beg the question, why? What's so great about this? What's drawing people's attention? Maybe you want to go check it out. Maybe you want to back the game yourself. They generally only post games that are still backable. So you're not going to like see a game and go, oh my God, that looks amazing. Read all about it, then go to back it and realize it's completely closed out. Now, backing games on Kickstarter has its own pitfalls, but it's nice that there's such a robust section where you can read about these games, how they're currently being reviewed and why people seem to like them so much. 
Um, so overall, it's a great website. It's got a forum, it's got, you know, Q&As on different games. If you have a rules question and you Google, you know, why does this rule work this way in this game? We, we don't understand it. These two rules, how do they mix? If you do a Google search, chances are it's going to bring you to some post on BoardGameGeek.com where somebody has already answered that question, whether it be somebody who thoroughly understands the game or somebody who even helped design the game. That's probably where it's going to take you to get the answer because that's where most people go to handle those things. If you want to look at reviews like mine, there are entire slews of channels that post their reviews, whether they be video or written directly to BoardGameGeek.com because it's such a great way to sort of disperse your take on a game to the audience. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's just a really good website. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. Make yourself an account. There's a fun sort of points and badge system where you can earn these little badges that attach to your profile to show people, oh, you've purchased you know over 500 games in your lifetime, or you're a seller of games, you like to trade games, you own all of the games of the year, you've posted uh, 10,000 times on the forums, all these different little things, holiday badges and special event badges, lots of fun stuff. So make yourself an account, start poking around, take a look at what they have to offer. And like I said, at the very least, Utilize that top 100 list as sort of a, a loose guide as to where to place your focus on what games are worth picking up, what games are worth avoiding, and read into the games a little bit. Maybe even find some favorite developers, favorite designers. Maybe you have a few games that you didn't realize were made by the same person or published by the same company. And so that steers you into looking more into that designer or into that publisher. For example, I have a lot of games that I really like from Renegade Game Studios. So I've you know, generally given them a second look when a new game comes out. I'll have a little more attention drawn to that because I know I like the stuff they make. Same with Stonemeyer Games or Jamie Stegmeyer, who actually runs the company and produces a lot of their games. Really great stuff, really love the quality, really love the style of gameplay that they put out. Um, if I had to give you a top five list favorite games of all time, I guarantee you Scythe would be on there. And that's like the Stonemeyer hit. I wanna say that was the 2015 game of the year actually. Um, so yeah, great website, great resource, check it out, spend some time on there. It's fun to drop in every now and then maybe once a day and just see what's going on, check out the new Kickstarters, see if anything's broken into the top 100 that hasn't been there or see if something's dropped out. Maybe there's a second edition of a game coming out that's been out of print for a while. Maybe it's in the top 20 and you've been waiting to get it. Great Western Trail. Um, and there's a second edition coming out and all of a sudden, you know, big news. You can get ready for that. You can find out when the release date is, maybe even go to a local game store and pre-order one. Um, yeah, great website, very functional tool. Um, I would definitely recommend you give it a shot. Um, but anywho, this is my little thing for today. Probably went about 10 minutes, I'm guessing. Can't really see. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll probably start doing these daily because they really don't take a lot of effort. I film them, I drag, drag a couple of presets from my uh, Premiere Pro onto them to edit the audio, edit the photo, the way that the sort of cinematography looks, even though this isn't a film camera, so it's really just videography. I'm rambling. Um, I apologize. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see you, let's say, tomorrow, whether or not it be with one of these or a proper review. Probably one of these. Probably a documentary later this week or maybe a review. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.